Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will make this fairy angel clothespin ornament. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. These are the clothespins that I like to use. Woodpile Fun 30 Round Doll Pins, and these are from Hobby Lobby. To make the face on the clothespin, we'll start with the wood burning tool. If you don't want to wood burn the eyes, then you can use a brown marker. I'm going to try to make 10 fairy angels today. So I've pulled 10 clothespins out. I like this kind of clothespin because the heads are a little bigger. Some of them have shorter heads and these are more of an oval shape. There we go. I'm just touching the tool to the front of the face and I spin it around to determine which side is just sort of cleaner and smoother. That made a little brown mark. I the the tool slid over a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and use the other side. And now I'm done with the wood burning tool. Now for the features, I'm going to just squeeze out a little drop of this sort of berry colored paint. It's actually called Mendocino Red by Ceramcoat. I don't even know if they still make this color, but that's the color that I have. And then with the tip of this bamboo skewer, I'm going to put two little dots for the mouth and then draw a line and then a little dot for the nose. And I do have an entire video called Focus on Faces, where you can find very detailed instructions for the Rick Rack Ruby face. Just sort of like two little dots, boop, boop, and then draw a line in between them, and then a little dot for the nose. Two dots, and then connect them and then a little dot for the nose. I'm using this bamboo skewer. Every once in a while, I kind of roll the paint off to make sure that the point is very small and sharp. Sometimes I feel like I have too much paint on, on the end, and so that's when I tap, tap, tap it. Now you can also just draw this with a marker if you like. That's what I do when I have children um, crafting with me and just bring out a bunch of markers. I'm going to use this brown Pigma Micron 01 permanent marker. It's this sort of light brownish rust color and this is for the eyelashes and the eyebrows. Here in Arizona, paint dries very quickly so I'm not worried about the paint on the mouth and nose drying. There's two lines on the bottom corner for eyelashes and two more lines above the eyes for eyelashes and then two lines for eyebrows. I made those extra long on the bottom. <laughs> that's it. There's 10. Now we're going to do the cheeks. I like to put a piece of paper towel down so that I don't get the, the product on my working surface. 
I'm going to use a Q-tip and um, just cosmetic blush and I will just rub it onto the cheeks like that. And there we go. The faces are done. Now I have this jelly roll of red, green, and sort of off-white or neutral shades. It's from Kona, Robert Kaufman. And I'm gonna use these neutral colors. This sort of looks like a muslin and I'm going to run one edge of this through my ruffler. So I'm using this Bernina ruffler attachment and I have this on the very tightest, the number one setting, and I'm going to run this through um, to gather up one edge as tight as I can. And I also do have a video just on using this attachment. Here's how it looks once it's all gathered. And this of course will become the dress on the fairy angels. Each one takes about two and a half or three inches. What I'm aiming for is to get five angels or five ornaments from each one of these strips. So for a total of 10, I'm gonna do two strips for a total of 10 angels. And we are just about ready to go. So I've done a lot of preparation for this um, design and, and this project is a variation of the Dear Christmas clothespin girl, but I have a couple of updates. First of all, I'm using some die cut shapes. I have these two butterfly shapes for the wings. They look like this. And I cut, I cut them from felt. The felt is a wool felt. I'll give you the source of my supply list. And it looks like this from Hero Arts. And I got this at Joanne Fabrics. Whenever you die cut these shapes, the center doesn't completely cut out. So you have to kind of cut those by hand. And then I've also cut some little hearts and flowers for the bodice and some strips for the arms. I've also made pom-poms. This is acrylic yarn, it looks like this. I got this from Amazon. It's a bag of all different colors, which is really fun. So I made a variety of colors of hair and I used my clover pom-pom maker for that. This is the 25. So this is the 25 size pom-pom maker from Clover. I'm just gonna <laughs> go ahead. All my faces are made. I, I have um, chosen one of these hearts for the bodice right here and I'm going to cut off about uh, three inch 2.5 to three inches I only need to get five pieces out of this and then I'm going to apply some hot glue right across here this is that sort of waist area right here and then I'll press this into it and instead of seaming up the back, I think that I can just sort of fold over one side like this and press it into the glue and then fold over the other side and maybe fold this under so that it has a fold there in the back instead of sewing it. I think that'll be faster and easier. And especially if you're working with children it's just a little bit simpler. There's the back with that folded over edge right there. It looks like a seam, but it's not actually sewn. There's the front. There's a little bit of fullness to the skirt, but not too much, just a gentle sort of a bell shape. 
The next thing I'm going to do is choose some arms. Maybe I'll do white, sort of a cream color actually. And I'm going to glue them just in the center back. So I put a little bit of glue in the center of that strip and I'm gonna leave the arms like that for now. And next I will choose a pom-pom. I think this blonde color will look nice with the purple. And I'm gonna open up that pom-pom to sort of expose the center and squeeze some glue into there. And then I'll press that onto the head very securely, a generous amount of glue because the glue that holds the pom-pom onto the head is the same glue that is going to hold the hanging loop and the entire angel will be suspended from that. So I wanna make sure I get a nice, good hold. That feels nice and secure. The hair is on and next is the wings. I think I'll do pink and white maybe, just to get a little pink in there. And um, I'm going to squeeze a little bit of glue right there in the center. And then put the smaller piece right on top of the larger piece. And this is a little bit tricky. Just remember that the, that the stack piece shows on the front. So you don't want to do it like this. But there will always be the time that, you know, that happens accidentally. And that's fine. That's not a big deal but I kind of prefer it to show to the front. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue right there and just glue this to the back of the neck. Right there. So that covers any of the wooden clothespin that might have still been exposed in the back. Here's how it looks from the front. Now for the flowers, I have these little forget-me-nots. They come in groups of five plus an extra piece with the buds like that. And I think that's a little much for this project, kind of overwhelms her. So I wanna choose three flowers. And I have this floral tape that's gold glitter. It's not very sticky though. But I like the way it looks on this project. So I'm going to start by applying a little bit of glue at the start and then wrapping the stems. Like I say, it's not very sticky, but it's pretty. I got this at, um, in the floral department at Joanne Fabrics. But of course you could use uh, green floral tape or even white floral tape. You can find that there. Sometimes it's in the wedding department. I'm going to cut this off a little bit. I think it might be a little long. I would say that stem is about an inch and a half. And I'm going to glue the bouquet to her waist. I like to have the stem at a slight angle. So I have glue right there. And I will turn it and press it right into her waist like this. And then her hands will come around onto the stem as if she is holding the flowers. And just overlap like this. If I have longer arms, they get a little bend like this, and then if they're shorter, they wind up more straight. I like it when they overlap though. Hands and the bouquet, the hair, the wings, the dress. Now here's my halo. I think this is about two and a half inches maybe. And I shaped it into this round U shape. I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue to each end and then put that into her hair like that. Maybe a little bit forward so that it comes kind of like forward and above the face instead of being out like this, just a little bit forward. And then finally, 
For the hanging loop, I have this gold and white baker's twine. It's on a needle and I will just stitch it through the base of the pom-pom hair, pull it through, and And there she is. That looks good. Now I'll finish the rest of these. I'm going to make the rest of them and line them all up and show you at the end. They're really fun and easy. I finished all 10 of my little fairy angels. And <laughs> this one is my favorite. I did all neutral shades. So, um... You know, my effort to incorporate all the pinks and the purples that I would imagine a little girl would love um, <laughs> were overcome by my appreciation for this one in the neutral tones. So if I was making these again, I would just make them all in neutral tones. The other tip that I came up with is that it's actually easier to put the hanging loop through the pom-pom before you add the halo. So thank you. If you stayed all the way to the end of the video, then you're going to get that very valuable tip. Thank you for watching my video. If you're enjoying my tutorials, please like, share, and subscribe.